welcome to the very first episode of Startup in Spotlight by Horses Table News. With focus on latest updates from the international startup ecosystem, we bring to you up to the minute news coverage of startup fundings, investor opinions, innovations, as well as upcoming global entrepreneurial events. I'm Saloni Agarwal, co-founder of Horses Table News and your host for today. Today on our show, we have with us Mr. Mehul Dharuka, founder of MDEEC, a startup offering training and development programs to MNCs. Mehul is an author, corporate trainer, and a filmmaker. He has three books to his credit, all primarily on the global startup ecosystem, funding of startups, and how entrepreneurs are funding innovative means to fund their ventures. In 17 years of his career, he has been into branding, sales, marketing, customer relations, corporate communication, and has been a passionate trainer for soft skills. He has been facilitated with 13 awards and honors as well. Welcome, Mehul. It's a privilege to have you Thank on you. our show. Thank you, Saloni. Thank you so much for that generous introduction. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. So, uh, Mehul, you have achieved so much in your life. <clears throat> Where did you find the inspiration to keep going into different directions and finding success? So there's a two uh, level answer to this, Saloni. The first is something to do with my genetics because I belong to a Marwadi business family. And uh, being an Agarwal, Agarwal community, you know, we are into business and we are known for our business acumen. So born into that family, it was natural to me. It was something that I was always wanting to do. And uh, that is one reason. And the second reason is I have always been very ambitious in my career. You know, when even when I was in my college and uh, I used to be, you know, I was completing my education. I started supporting my father in his business of uh, he had an industry where he was doing a lot of job work for uh, automobile sector. You know, so we were vendors for Tata, Bajaj, Kiloskar, Godrej, and so on. So oh, there, uh, that time that bug beat me. So I was only 16 years old, a teenager. But I started uh, working with him and I got the, you know, I got the nuances of business, uh, you know, fairly understood. And that's how I moved on in my journey. And I never have led any kind of a challenge stop me. You know? So that was something that I take as an inspiration. And one person I will give this credit to is my mother, because she is a very strong headed woman and has always encouraged me with all the passion and all the weirdness that I have. <clears throat> For doing something, she's always been very supportive. So yeah, that has been my uh, inspiration. Well, it's quite inspiring, you know. In such a young age, 16 years, you've been into business and uh, you know helping your your parents in business. Yes, so that's really yes. I was helping my dad. Yeah, I was. I was. I was a student of business. You can say. <laughs> Learning my role. Got it, yeah. So you spent your three years in California and you also received a letter of recognition from Silicon Valley's based company. So what was your experience? How was this experience? It was very good, uh, Saloni. And fortunately, uh, I am a green card holder of the US. But honestly, I never had that US charm. You know, I, I was never uh, wanting to go, to, to live the American dream. So when I got my green card, I, I like you know, unlike most of us, I rejected it because that is something that people probably are keen for. But I wasn't really keen to be a part of that because I was doing fairly well for myself. So I never thought, why should I go there? But I was a mentor for a company uh, in New York, this company, and they asked me to come for an in-person assignment in California for a three-month assignment. You know, So that gave me a reason to be there. And I went there for a three-month assignment. But one thing led to another. And uh, I started doing a lot of training work and filmmaking and events work over there. And I ended up even being a radio jockey for one of my clients. You know? So the things just started happening. And uh, the passion that I carried probably and the entrepreneurial spirit that I had, it kept on continuing. And for almost three years, I was there in Silicon Valley. And yes, a couple of companies were gracious enough to grant me that letter of recognition. So it was a journey which I had never thought I could make it, you know, because I'm not a technical guy. I don't belong to IT, you know, so sustaining in Silicon Valley without technical knowledge and, uh, you know, California is a very expensive place. So I, I never thought I would last this long. But yeah, God has been kind and I did fairly well for myself. So what assignment were you into in California for three months? 
so i was working there for a coaching assignment and uh, basically this company was dealing with the employees who have real life situations where they are unable to overcome that you know so for example i may be having a kind of a rift with my boss and there are some situations which i don't know how to handle so they would come up to this organization and ask them that do you have any solution you know so this particular organization would as per the subject matter expertise they would award that to some some of us you know that what do you think you can do about it so there was this one assignment and they wanted me to be there in person and coach this person you know and uh, take him through the journey get him to learn certain things so i had to have a couple of sittings with him every week and based on that then we started to have that uh, coaching conversation and uh, for 3 months i was there with him and once he started showing improvement and there was a lot of confidence in him that he started generating then we moved on and uh, i moved on to my next assignment you know okay so that was the beginning that what made me came to us i started my journey with that assignment oh wow that's nice So let's talk about you as an entrepreneur. In 2002, you launched the Synergy Institute of Management, and in 2016, you launched MDEEC, which is a Learning and Development Institute. So, what gaps did you find in the existing market, which made you move into the direction of training people? So, Saloni, uh, it's a two-fold answer. The number one answer is I began my career in sales. you know so i i was on the other side of the table so i uh-huh. never thought that training would be a function which would be that important and crucial but i realized that a lot of companies and organizations they are they treat training function as a patent function they treat it as a cost center you know so unfortunately the the dream of things are such that you know we have we take training as one of the time milega to karenge kind of an attitude you know they don't consider it to be an inbuilt thing that training is an important aspect of your development you pass out your school or college does not mean your learning ends your learning is going to be continued there's a learning curve curve every time so that was one thing that uh, you know inspired me to be in this field and i saw that a big gap and the second thing is in my career i had an opportunity where uh, there was this organization which was coming up with a global learning and development platform and they wanted somebody from the business development platform who could take care of that function and you know in that 22 global offices it could reach out the message could go the deliverables could be explained and things like that so that was my second step and i realized in that organization as a model that there was a lot of gap the trainings were at the bare minimum they had technical products they had uh, a lot of team work that was happening the, the company was expanding you know uh, and it was doing very well but there were no training assignments so that kind of made me feel that you know what there are a lot of gaps skill gaps you know so we should arrest them so we did a training needs identification for this that company and we found out that there's a lot of skill gaps that are there people who are in the gm and senior gm positions they also lack certain leadership skills they were unable to really take their team through the tough times the growing times you know so that gave the birth to a lot of training and that became my model to kind of base my uh, you know um, thought process on and then we started delivering a lot of training programs so these are the two gaps that i saw which inspired me and i still do uh, work in the training and development field okay so mehul why are these skills behavioral skills so important in today's world for the startup founders i would say that they are all the more important today why because today we are in the era of globalization today to talk to singapore guy or a uk guy or a us guy or an africa guy is just a click of a button now when you are so accessible to people over the globe your communication your leadership skills your code of conduct to drive yourself becomes all the more imperative earlier when we were a closed economy we had our own people to deal with but that was probably okay you know we we could sustain with the limited skills that we all had in terms of communication but today because we are on a global platform it is important to present yourself appropriately and now because of the globalization even within india the awareness has has grown multifold you know people are now conscious of the way you talk the way you behave the way you showcase now this is about the the things that you can see but there are a lot of things which you cannot see like the iceberg concept you know so there is a lot of things that you can the behavior is seen but what goes behind behavior your attitude your thought process your culture those are the things which we don't see 
and to build them to make them more appropriate to make them more, uh, you know compact and useful the behavioral trainings are very important because it it kind of gives you the ability to communicate assertively it will give you the uh, the the ability to manage your conflicts it will give you the ability to be a good team player it will give you the ability to be a good leader you know so these are all essential skills for you to scale up the ladder and to come out a, a better human being you know okay and how can one acquire these skills mr daruka it is self awareness the first and okay. very most important thing is self awareness if i have to ask you saloni about a person in your family to talk about him or her i'm sure it will be like a click you will be Correct. going and you will shoot but if i have to ask you about your own self you will take some time difficult correct yes you know what is it that i like okay i like this okay what is it that i want in life what is my purpose in life xyz this is what is very important self awareness you know people should realize that yes th these are the things which i need in life i need to reach a certain goal if i don't have a goal then get a goal you know and if i have to reach that goal what are those ingredients that i must have and there is never a harm in learning something which will enhance your presentation which will enhance your communication which will make you more into people you know you will be a people friendly person it will make you more social so that's why uh, the skills are important and necessary okay so i hope i answered you uh, yes yes you did definitely <laughs> <laughs> So, which companies, as part of MDEC, have you got associated with so far? Uh, L'Oreal Cosmetics, Suzlon Energy Limited, uh, Greaves Cotton, then uh, Force Motors, then um, uh, Premium Transmissions, then uh, in US Solex uh, Technologies, Imagia, uh, the Geo Group, G E O Geo Group. They are the world's largest correction and rehabilitation company, and then. Um, many many more you know symbiosis indira institute you know many of them you know so by the grace of god uh, i have been to almost every good company and institute <laughs> <laughs> you are truly an inspirational person uh, mr mehul <laughs> thank you saloni you are being very generous <laughs> <laughs> recently you also hosted gcef which is your flagship program so can you tell us more about this festival so uh, again an interesting anecdote you know because uh, when this covid thing happened uh, of course my companies my clients my stakeholders we used to keep having this discussion you know that are yaar covid ho gaya this has happened you know how will the industry impact you know we are suffering like this and a lot of communication i said there are so many people talking so many things let's channelize it let's give it a form let's give it a structure so i decided to form a team and i decided to reach out to people tell them that our theme is this covid you know we are all suffering the least anybody could have thought is that the entire world comes to a standstill because of one thing called corona and it is impacting globally every industry so i reached out to people and we formed this theme called are you future employed and it simply meant what is going to be my career in the covid times and post covid times if i am from the manufacturing industry how will it impact me if i am from the it industry how will it impact me and so on so people were kind i got the fortune of connecting with dr ganesh natrajan he, he was the former ceo of sensar and uh, head of nascom he today also he is holding a very uh, authoritative position in the society in the technology field then i had mr girish chitle he is the owner of the popular chitle food products then from the media industry i had the director of the criminal justice show which is streaming on hotstar mr vishal furia and siddharth jain and likewise so the people capable and commanding leadership positions when they said that yes mehul this makes sense we would be we would want to be a part of it i said bang you know let's just go for it let's just hit the bullseye so we planned this seminar and uh, it was a three day seminar uh, planned over uh, 24 25 26 april and uh, we had nine panels and we had tremendous response to it even till date i have request from people if we can have more such webinars you know which we can host so yes so that was the triggering point and that is the reason we had this program first program i plan to have a, a few more coming down you know so that's about it okay So now coming to your books, Mehul, we all know you're a great author. How did you get your interest in the startup ecosystem? 
Oh my God. So, you know what? Startups again have been something very close to my heart. And I was designing a coffee table book. I was uh, Suzlon Energy Limited, one of my clients. So, uh, they have had a fantastic journey. Till date, nobody believes that it's an Indian company. Everybody thinks that it's a German based company. And, uh, you know, the owners or the founders, promoters are Germans. But it is not so. It was started by one very simple man called Tulsi Tanti. And um, he he belonged to Gujarat from a very small town. And how he has scaled up Suzlon today with world's top five wind energy companies, you know, and it has got a big name today. So I I said, let's capture this. Let's make a coffee table book because we had a beautiful library there in Suzlon. So when I was doing that, I realized that there are so many such people around me who have a story to tell. You know, why shouldn't I capture them as well? So one thing led to another and... Um, as, because it was my first book, I wasn't getting any publisher back in 2012. And that time the publishing industry was not so matured as it is today. You know, So I decided to self-publish it. And that kind of uh, gave me a good outcome. You know, I sold all my 1000 books that I had self-published. So it gave me the reason to go for my next book. So that's how I entered this. And startups and entrepreneurship is something I'm very passionate about. Because I do coaching. I visit colleges for their entrepreneurship programs. And I, you know, I lecture students and I guide them, train them. So yes, so that was the triggering point and that got me into three books now. You know? <laughs> yes, no, that's very interesting. So your first book, Pride of Pune, which was based on the journey of 12 entrepreneurs of Pune. How did you, how did you get to know about all these startups and their journeys? A few of them were known to me and uh, uh, most of them belong to my community. So as I was growing up, uh, you know, I, I used to be interacting with them and I was told by my parents that, you know, you look at that man, he came up from nowhere, you know, he belonged to a very small town. He just came with 10 rupees in his pocket and today he's a millionaire. Or look at that gentleman, you know, you should become like them in the sense, learn their entrepreneurial spirit, learn the way they have carried their passion and determination. And the first thing that really hit me hard was a gentleman in my book, which I have covered. He lost most of his family members in a span of two years. But despite that sad setback, you know, he never let that come in the way of his passion in his entrepreneurial spirit. So that was like, you know, that is the determination one needs to have. So some of them I knew and some of them I got connected with the people whom I've covered. They said that Mehul, you're doing a good job. Let me introduce you to this XYZ person and uh, he will be able to give you a good story. You know, So that's how I connected with everybody and I got my 12 stories. Wow, that's interesting. So your other two books have also been received well. Was there any incidents or experiences, you know, that you came across while writing these books that left a memory or a life changing experience behind for you? Definitely, Saloni, every story that I wrote gave me something from it. You know, I learned something from it because each one of them have been very passionate and they have been very courageous to go. Like, for example, in my second book, I have covered a story on this lady called Shubra Chadda. She is the owner of Chumbak. So uh, while she was um, deciding to work on Chumbak, she had only one option is to sell her only house. You know, so she had a small baby then. And uh, she was in two minds, should I sell my house or not? What should I be doing? So the passion was so, uh, so much calling for her that she decided to sell her only house and go ahead and form Chumba, you know, and then rest is history because she did get funding and she was funded by other uh, venture capitalists. So that courage, you know, because somebody may call it foolishness. What if the tables would have turned the other way? What would have happened? But see, that is what is risk-taking ability that nobody has or most of people don't have. You know, That's the appetite an entrepreneur must have within him to take that risk. Calculated risk, but that risk. You know, So each story has had left an impact on me. But this particular one story has the most impact because it was something that, you know, it was literally a life and death kind of situation for her. <laughs> okay. So risk-taking, do you think it's very important for at least, you know, the startup companies? Of course, you know, because without reason, I wouldn't, I wouldn't limit it to only startups, but yes, even beyond them, risk taking ability is very, very necessary. Now, there's a fine line between ability to take risk and to do foolish things. You know, there's a very fine line. So a person must have that, uh, that capability to assess that risk 
to find a way out of what could be his steps going further what is going to be the road map how are things going to unfold is he prepared for the worst if the answers to all of these are there go ahead and take that risk you know sometimes people don't do that and just in their as an instinct that they get they may take a decision which i don't thing is wrong the only thing is that you are putting your motivation you are putting your energy your passion at risk you know so don't do that so yes risk taking is important for startups or anybody you know because there that is where you start growing you know that is where you are out of your comfort zone and that is where you try to build your things otherwise if you are only going to be in your comfort zone don't expect miraculous results you know <laughs> True, very true. So we also understand your fourth book may be at play. So can you tell our viewers a little about the book and when can we expect the book to be published? So the fourth book is a fiction. I have attempted. You know, I write a lot of stuff. Uh, I have been very fortunate to have written a lot of things. So it's a fiction and uh, it is a romantic thriller that I have written. and unfortunately because of this covid thing it is stuck you know with the publisher so if everything goes well by september my book should be in the market okay that's nice got it so mehul your journey is truly inspiring i can feel the you know intensity the struggles you've overcame to achieve success so can you Thank give you. us some inf- uh, insights to our viewers on how to face failures and continue working towards their life goals Sorry, I missed the part. Uh, your voice cracked up. Yeah, sorry. I'm asking. Can you give some insights to our viewers on how to face failures and continue working towards their life goals? See, each one has their own, um, you know, way of looking at things. So I do not look at failures as something that should stop you or that sh- that should obstruct your success. Failures are important, and I am. I, I. In fact, I would say. if you are not failing you are doing something wrong you know so it is important to fail why because then you learn from it you know because none of us come with everything you know on planet earth we all learn here we all build ourselves here we all become someone over here you know so failures are bound to happen never let those failures become a problem for you or become something that demotivates you learn from it think of why it happened what could have been done better and move on you know because i have had tremendous failures in my life trust me you know um, i have done such foolish things in my life you know because that was my learning process i didn't know then you know whether what this is going to be is going to be right or wrong like just give, let me give you a simple example when i decided to go to california the assignment was not paying me so well that i could sustain over there for 3 months and lot of people asked me that you know what you are in pune you have been doing so well for yourself why are you wanting to risk your savings to go and do that assignment i only told them one thing you know that i am not going there to do the assignment i am going there to experience it you know what is it that is going to come out of it for me i may have to put in some money for that probably but that's my investment in my personality that's my investment in my tomorrow you know so from that standpoint i went had i just thought about money or finance as a goal i would have never gone there you know and sustaining over there making life you know i i did very well so that could only happen because i was ready to face the failure so one has to be prepared don't get uh, lost because you have failed rather pick up what was there for you and move ahead okay so thank you so much mehul for taking out your time for us today at for at startups in it was very inspired inspirational and insightful interaction with you mr mehul i hope so saloni and thank you so much you have been very kind and thank you for giving me this opportunity it really means a lot thank you so much thank you viewers for listening to our first show our next guest will be sohail khan founder of a singapore based healthcare startup evercare that is creating waves in india stay tuned for our next episode